Did you know that the standard way we train linear regression in machine learning is by minimizing something called the residual sum of squares, or RSS for short? Here's what that means. Imagine plotting all your data points and then drawing a straight line through them, the best fit line, described by the equation of linear regression. Now take the vertical distance from each point to the line, square those distances, and add them up. That total is called the residual sum of squares, or RSS. And intuitively, we want that number to be as small as possible, ideally zero, because that means our model is fitting the data as closely as it can. But here's where things get interesting. There's a deep and unexpected connection between this RSS and the idea of relative entropy, a concept first introduced by the physicist Ludwig Boltzmann while studying the thermodynamics of gases. And here's a twist. In our last video, we used relative entropy to derive linear regression. But we never even mentioned RSS. We showed that under certain conditions, the rows of our dataset could be modeled using a multivariate Gaussian distribution. From there, we leaned on the concept of relative entropy, borrowed from physics, to estimate the unknown parameters of that distribution. But when it came to estimating the unknown parameters of linear regression, things got a bit messy. We had to perform a rather complicated integration just to relate the multivariate Gaussian parameters to the regression coefficients. In other words, we took the long way around. So that raises two questions. How exactly is RSS related to relative entropy? And how does this new approach to linear regression differ from the traditional method we all know? If you're interested in seeing how, Stay tuned. Before moving forward, if you are from a map-based field like physics looking for a data science industry job, I invite you to join our bootcamp. Here are the key highlights of the program. Most importantly, it's free if no job is landed. Also, there will be weekly, live, expert-led, hands-on project-solving sessions. In episode one of this video series, we explored the idea that the rows of any dataset can be understood as samples drawn from a probability distribution. If the system under study has reached a steady state, a natural first approximation for this distribution is a multivariate Gaussian. This Gaussian distribution says that the probability of a data point is proportional to an exponential function whose exponent involves the distance between that point and the mean scaled by the inverse of the covariance matrix. The mean vector and covariance matrix are the unknown parameters we need to estimate. In supervised machine learning, our goal is to predict one particular column, typically denoted Y, based on the remaining columns, which we denote collectively as X. This leads us to the conditional probability of Y given X, which is just the joint probability of X and Y divided by the total probability over all possible Y values. From this, we compute the expected value of Y, which becomes our prediction, denoted by Y hat. That means we average all possible values of Y weighted by their probability, and this gives us a linear expression, an intercept term, beta naught, plus a weighted sum of the features X, with weights given by beta. This final expression is just the equation for linear regression. Interestingly, the beta parameters here can be derived from the mean and covariance matrix of the Gaussian distribution, though those themselves still need to be estimated. In episode 2, we introduced relative entropy, a concept developed by Ludwig Boltzmann in statistical physics, to estimate these unknowns. Relative entropy, also known as the kullback liebler divergence, quantifies the information loss when we approximate the true distribution of the data with our model. By minimizing this divergence, we found estimates for the mean and covariance matrix. From there, we derived the regression coefficients in terms of these parameters by evaluating the integral of the expected value of y explicitly. In particular, the intercept beta naught is the average of the y values minus beta times the average of x. And the components of the beta vector can be written in terms of elements of the inverse covariance matrix and the differences between each feature and its mean. However, this approach is mathematically involved and not the most practical. Instead, we can directly apply the idea of relative entropy to the conditional distribution of y given x. 
This allows us to measure how well our model for predicting UI matches the true but unknown conditional probability. The kullback liebler divergence is defined as the integral of the true distribution times the log of the ratio between the true distribution and our model distribution. To model this conditional probability, we again start from the multivariate Gaussian and simplify. It turns out that the conditional distribution of y given x is itself a one-dimensional Gaussian, a bell curve centered at y hat with a variance sigma squared that comes from the last element of the covariance matrix. To proceed, we first expand the KL divergence. It becomes two terms. One is the entropy of the true distribution, and the second is the expected log likelihood under our model. Since the first term doesn't depend on the model parameters, we focus on maximizing the second. That means we want to maximize the average log of the model probability evaluated at the true y values. To make this practical, we estimate the true distribution from our dataset by using delta functions centered at each data point. When substituted into the integral, the delta functions turn the expression into a sum over the log of our model's predicted probabilities at each observed i value. This gives us the log likelihood function. After dropping constants, we're left with the sum of log probabilities from our model. If we now plug in the Gaussian form of the model, we get a log likelihood that includes two terms. One that involves the sum of squared errors between the observed y values and our predicted values, and another constant term. Only the first term depends on the beta parameters. So, maximizing the log likelihood is the same as minimizing the sum of squared differences between predicted and actual values. This quantity is known as the residual sum of squares, or RSS. It measures how far our predictions are from the actual values and is the standard loss function in linear regression. To make the calculations easier, we first define a bunch of matrices whose shapes are set by the number of columns of the dataset, denoted by lowercase n, and the number of rows, denoted by capital N. First, we define the parameter vector beta tilde. It's a column vector that starts with the intercept term, beta naught, followed by all the other coefficients, beta 1 through beta n. Next, we define the target vector, I tilde. It's simply a column vector containing all the observed values of the output variable, from Y1 to Y sub N. Then we define the design matrix, X tilde. Each row corresponds to one observation and contains a leading one for the intercept, followed by all the feature values for that row. We use these newly defined matrices to rewrite the equation of linear regression. The predicted y values, denoted as y hat, are given by the matrix product of x tilde and beta tilde. We can also express the loss function, called the residual sum of squares, or RSS, in matrix form. It's the square of the distance between the actual y values and the predicted y values, which in matrix notation is the transpose of that difference vector times itself. To be more explicit, in index notation, this becomes a sum over all observations. For each one, we take the difference between the actual y value and the predicted value, computed as a sum over features, and then square it. Expanding this expression gives us three terms. One involving the squares of the y values, one involving the product of y and x, and one involving products of asterisk x with itself and beta coefficients. To find the best fitting parameters, we take the derivative of the RSS with respect to each component of the beta tilde vector and set those derivatives to zero. This gives us an equation, a sum over y times x minus a double sum over beta times x times x, all equal to zero. We then convert this back into matrix form, giving us what's called the normal equation. It says that the transpose of x tilde times x tilde multiplied by beta tilde must equal the transpose of x tilde times i tilde. Solving this matrix equation gives us the final formula. Beta tilde equals the inverse of x tilde transpose times x tilde multiplied by x tilde transpose times i tilde. And here is what we were after. This expression provides the optimal linear regression parameters in terms of the dataset values. 
However, as you can see, even deriving the solution for the simplest machine learning model requires some work. For more complex models, such analytic solutions may not even exist. So, how can we estimate the best parameters for models when no analytic solution is available? That's the topic of a future episode. Until then, take care.